And CP, the franchise, is going to come on this show in a matter of moments. Big Knicks fan. And, oh, there he is, CP. There you are. How are you? Don't give me that Knicks stuff. Thank you. I, I, We're talking to LA right now, I, CP. I, I, happy to be See, here. You should cut. Listen. God, well, it's always good to have you. Now, listen. You, you, let me tell you how good life is when you give up the Knicks and become a Lakers fan. Come on, CP. You know inside you always wanted to be a Lakers fan. I remember when the Knicks drafted Patrick Ewing, I was thinking maybe one day they could have as many championships as the Lakers. They haven't won any since then. The Lakers have won like 10. They got 17 now. Come, come into the light, CP. Look at how miserable you look in that basement wherever you are over there with the Knicks gear and everything. What's the matter with you? Okay, listen. You follow the NBA, not just yeah. the Knicks. So um, uh, thank you for joining me on the Goodyear Hotline. It's always great to have you on the show. Do you, you, did you see DeMarcus Cousins? Is he, the, is he the Clippers' answer for AD or an answer for AD? Well, now with the Lakers, you got to contend with Andre Drummond, who's slated to be coming back this Thursday. So, no, I don't think Boogie Cousins is the answer to AD. What do you think I meant by AD? Anthony Davis. <laughs> yes, Andre <laughs> Drummond. Does, yeah. Well, yeah, you got Anthony Davis coming back soon, hopefully. You got Andre AD's. Drummond coming back on Thursday, but... Overall, I, I think the, the Lakers still can get the best of the Clippers if they meet up in the playoffs. Yeah, they have two. What's amazing to me about this Lakers team is that, you know, last year, Jokic and Murray, you can't play better than that. How do you play better than Jokic and Murray? Uh, you know, you look at the both the uh, Utah series and then the Clippers series. They were no match for AD and LeBron. It's like, it, it's unbelievable. It's a whole other level. There's a difference almost between like MVP caliber play and all-time MVP caliber play. Is there anyone in the West, in the Western Conference, CP, that you see if LeBron and AD are healthy can take down the Lakers? You know what? It's hard to count out LeBron. It's always hard to count out LeBron. But how can we discredit the Utah Jazz in the season that they're having? An outstanding season. Top of the, top of the whole league in terms of offense defense, rebounding, three-point shooting. You got to respect the Spider and the Utah Jazz. You got Joe Ingles and and uh, Jordan Clarkson beasting off the bench. You got so much firepower in that starting unit. The Stifle Tower, Rudy Gobert. I mean, Utah, they're playing championship-level offense, championship-level defense. The Lakers have to get back healthy for this stretch run or else I got to lean towards Utah right now, naturally. Although I don't know if they get by Phoenix. Like, I, first of all, tonight's game is great. Phoenix has a tremendous yeah. team and is right there with anyone. CP, when you watch these Western Conference teams like the Lakers, the Suns, the Jazz, the Clippers, uh, it goes on. As a Knicks fan, does it even look like the same sport to you? Or are you like, what sport are, what sport are they playing? <laughs> what are those superheroes? What's, what's going on listen, over there? Um, it's the a, it's Western, a lot to contend yeah, with with yeah. the West. you know. But listen, our Knicks, our Knicks, Kellerman, yes, you're and my Knicks, we are a work in progress. Right now, we're, we're trying to get things right with R.J. Barrett and Julius Randle, two pieces to the pot. But this is a star-driven league. We know that. So in the West, there's a lot of guys that you have to contend yeah. with, even Dallas. You know, Dallas came to MSG, beat the Knicks. They're, they're about 27-21 uh, in the campaign, sitting in seventh in the West. But they're a team that could be easily, you know, fourth in the East. So the West is deep. We, we know that. Oh, listen, if, the Ma if Porzingis ever gets healthy, and that's the story with him yeah. every year. Every year he has to work to get back to where he was. But if he can ever get there and stay there for a minute, Dallas is going to be a They should have beaten the Clippers in last year's playoffs had Porzingis not beat, gotten hurt. I thought they were the better team. So the 76ers now with Embiid back are coming for that one spot. But KD is coming back from Brook for, for Brooklyn. Talking to CP, the franchise, CEO of Knicks Fan TV, but a basketball analyst, not just Knicks analyst. Um, CP, I think Embiid was the MVP at the time of the injury, but he's missed too much time to win the MVP yeah. at this point. KD coming back is a huge thing for the Nets, but they lose Harden, who I think is their most important player because he conducts the whole orchestra, you know? With the, with the Sixers getting healthy at the same time that Harden is now out, what do you think is about to happen 
In the well, East. you look at the strength of schedule. There's about 21 games left. The Sixers are sitting in 20th in terms of strength of schedule. Uh, Nets are about 10. So they have a bit harder of a schedule. Sixers with MB coming back. He played like an MVP last night in, Bol- in Boston, dropping 35 points. I like the Sixers where they are defensively, the way they're starting five defense. I like their bench depth with Fork Moss and uh, Maurice Tybal playing defense as well. Now with the Nets... You know, listen, the Harden injury hurts, but the Nets are going to coast on offense, Max. We we always forget that Kyrie Irving is averaging 28 points and six assists, 50-40-90 slash line. He's coming up on the 50-40-90 slash line. You cannot discredit that Kyrie Irving has been an absolute beast for the Nets this year. Offensively, they're going to find their groove when KD comes back. You still have Joe Harris shooting at 48% from three. Um, so, you know, Harden's going to miss some time with the hamstring injury, but offensively, they won't have a problem gelling. It's going to be on the defensive end. They're currently ranked 25th in the league. We got to see how they get that together come playoff time. Although Claxton, like, you know, for all the hoopla around, you know, Blake Griffin yeah. and LaMarcus Aldridge and DeAndre Jordan, those are name brand guys. Claxton's probably their best yeah. big. And, and the Nets, by the way, even against, against your Knicks the other night. Yeah. At halftime, it's like, boy, they don't play any defense. They started playing defense in the second half and won the game. This is what's interesting. You bring up Kyrie Irving. Kyrie's the most skillful player no on the team. Like, he, there's nothing Harden can do that Kyrie yeah. can't do better. Handle, shoot, get to the – but and KD is the best player on the team. But what Kyrie lacks is Harden's wisdom. Yeah. Harden may – you know, maybe Kyrie's the most skilled, but Harden's understanding of the game, court vision, and decision-making – is the best on the team. He's been so impressive this year. You brought up Joe Harris. He's the best shooter yeah. on the team, on a team with, with the with three greatest offensive players ever played together in the history of basketball. They're, none of them are the best shooter on the team, in fact. CP, it's been my contention. If and when they get healthy, given how quickly they came together, how they played defense, even without KD, this will be the greatest offense in the history of American team sports. And I don't even think the Lakers can take them seven games if they're fully healthy. Where are you on the Nets? Oh, all this, all this Nets talk. I got to big up the Nets on this show. You know what? Listen, you're right. You're absolutely right. This is an offensive juggernaut. You have three walking buckets that can get you buckets at any point in any game. And I think that's why, you know, even if their defense lacks a little bit, their offense is, is going to be too hard to stop. Milwaukee may give them a little bit of run for their money, depending on if they meet in the conference finals or not. But, you know, if the Nets make it to the finals, I don't think this Laker team that's going to be looking to build chemistry kind of late in this season, I don't think they'll have enough firepower to contend with the Nets. I got to go Nets in six if they meet in the finals. CP, you have to broaden your horizons. You're a talented guy. You can obviously talk things other than the Knicks. What are you doing with Knicks fan TV? You're looking just for Listen. Dolan to kick you out of the garden one day? You might as well branch out and do other teams, like good teams, you know? You can cover all Listen, kinds of teams. I'm well, I'm well versed in the NBA, talk a little Max, football but I'm, I'm all about the orange and blue. Yeah. I'm true yeah. and true orange and blue. There's no room for bandwagon jumping and things of that nature, sellouts. Okay. You know, you go to gold. L.A., you go to Boston, you just I bounce it out. around, man. No loyalty right. from you, Max. No, Boston. Boston. I'm not going to Boston. I'm a decent person. I draw the line somewhere. <laughs> Purple and gold, brother. The great CP, the franchise, ladies and gentlemen. You check them out. CEO of yeah. Knicks Fan TV. Thanks, CP. 